When you first start learning CSS Grid, it can feel overwhelming. There are template rows and columns. There's line numbers and negative line numbers and line names and grid areas. There's a whole bunch of new values and there's even new units. All of those things make CSS Grid very powerful. They let us do a lot of amazing things, but for the most part, you can get away with starting off with just a few very basic things and get a lot done with it. Hi there, my front end friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and I'm here to help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And today I wanna to take that frustration away by simplifying grid as much as possible. Because the truth of the matter is, we can do a lot with it with just one property or two if you count display grid and a couple of values but nothing too fancy. So let's simplify it as much as possible and so let's go and dive right into the code and you can see I've set up something simple here and the other day I was on the uh, Dropbox website and I was like oh that's a one where you could probably do all the major layout pieces of it with CSS grid so I stole a little bit from here to use to explore how we can do this and how grid can work. And what you'll see is I have uh, here a grid even column set up and it goes all the way down. And in there I have these divs right there that have the content in each one of them. And this is the first really important thing is this relationship. So what I'm going to do is in my CSS, I'm going to come and do a grid. Uh, I called it grid even columns because that's what I wanna make. And we'll explore this idea of even columns a little bit. And we'll even compare things to Flexbox a little bit as we go through this. And obviously the first thing I want to do on this is a display of grid. And the underwhelming thing with grid always is when you first do it, nothing actually happens. And as I did promise that you only need two properties, display grid being one of them. So the other property we're going to be taking a look at is grid template columns. So we do have grid template rows. We do have grid auto columns, auto rows. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But just doing this and only worrying about the parent and not the children is the first step I want you to take when you're dealing with grid. And what we're going to do here is on this for now, I'm gonna write 50%, 50%. We're gonna change this a little bit as we go. But you can see that's made this little two column grid and my, my content has shifted into these cells. And this is the first very important thing with grid is that relationship between the parent and the children. So the grid even columns is now my grid container. And each one of these items is now a grid item. Now this isn't just a naming convention that we have for these. This has important consequences on how the layout's actually made. So display grid is actually an inner display property, the same as display flex. It changes the inner behavior. The outer behavior when we use display grid or flex is always going to be a display of block. So on the outside, it's a block. And on the inside, it is a display of grid making these grid items. And when an item is a grid item, that means the display block, a display inline, all of those things, they go out the window. So I could have a div here and a span here, and it's not actually going to change anything at all in terms of my layout or how things work, because this is not an inline element, this is not a block element, these are now grid items. So let's just change that back to a div so it's a little bit more consistent. Uh, but the important thing to know about grid items is they live on the grid, and the easiest way to see the grid is to use your dev tools. And I'm not going to be in the dev tools too much in this one, but you can see it helps visualize what's happening in here. If you'd like a deeper dive on the dev tools and sort of the grid inspector and the things you can do with it, I have a video and I'll link to that down below and also put a com or card should be popping up for it. And what this is doing, let's actually add another one here. So instead of 50%, let's do a, we'll just do 30, 30 and 30. And you can see what this is doing is it's making now three columns and this is the size of them. So I have 30%, 30%, 30%. Or why don't I make this one 20, 20, and that's 40, so this one could be 60. So here is a grid column of 60%, then I have a grid column of 20%, and another grid column of 20% right there. And you'll notice that we have rows that are appearing. I haven't set up any rows. This is the browser going, well, I have four children, and I only have three rows, so it's going to create a row automatically, and it's going to place it in the first cell, and that first cell just happens to fall into this column, so it falls, and it follows that same thing that this one up here is following. So right away, you can do some interesting things with this, but one thing I wouldn't recommend doing is really using percentages here unless you have a very specific reason to um, because right now this actually adds up to 100 but one of my favorite things with grid is if you have a gap and so let's add a gap of one rem and now we actually get this problem where my layout is overflowing out the side 
The reason it's overflowing out the side is because we have 60 plus 20 plus 20, 100%, plus we have this gap that's coming in between them. Huh, that's no fun, right? Um, so the way we can deal with that instead is by using FR units. And maybe you always want this, or let's just say this one's always going to be 50%. And then again, we can't do a 25%, 25%. You don't want to do math to calculate. And we could use calcs and we could actually fix this. But you want this one to be 50% and you just want these two to always be equal. Well, we could come and instead of using percentages, use the FR unit. And FR just means take up the rest of the available space, more or less. It's kind of complex how it works, but basically it's going to distribute the, the space that's available. And because they're both one FR, it's going to distribute it equally between the two. And so you can even see we have 253 pixels here and 253 pixel width for this one. So they're both the same. So we know this one is 50% of the parent and that's going to stay at 50%. And these ones are going to squish and stretch just taking up whatever is left over. And that's where it's really easy to make even columns because you just put every single one of them as one FR and then you know you have three equal columns. And in this case, let's come and make that four equal columns and then we get four equal columns like that and it just works and it's nice and it's easy and you have four equal columns. I did promise we'd compare this to flex. So let's just comment this out. It wouldn't work anyway, but we'll comment it out and let's change this over to flex. And we actually have a flex inspector now here as well. Uh, the one thing is the flex inspector doesn't show us the sizes of these elements. So I'm going to go and grab my little selector here. We're going to look at this div and this div's width is 194 pixels. This one is at 229 and this one's at 233 and then we have a tiny one at 195 on this side. There are ways of using flex that you have to select the children and then you can equally distribute things. But it's so much easier when you go on the grid and then the grid is in charge. The grid is setting the cells and then the content has to live in the cells that you've created. So just like that, we can create a nice equal columns. They go across, it's a 1D layout and grid just, it does handle 1D layout really well. So there we go. I use this all the time doing something like that. Now, this is a little bit cumbersome to write out. So if you're writing the same thing over and over again, we can fix this up a little bit with the repeat function. So we come in with repeat. We say how many times we want it to repeat. So we want four times and then we put what you want in this case, one FR, and then we get four equal columns again with our gap in between them. And you might be saying, well, this is great, but obviously it's small screen sizes. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> and that's very true. So what we could do with this is we could actually take this out of here, but leave our gap because the nice thing with that is it's going to keep our spacing. Let's just take our gap off for a second. Uh, and you can see things get kind of stuck together a little bit. So with that gap, we get a little bit of extra spacing that just spaces things out vertically. And then what we could do is come in with a media query, min width, and we're going to go with a 40M. And on this one, what I'm going to do is then choose my grid even columns. And then we can do that. So at small sizes, it's like this. And then at large sizes, it goes and it fits in like that. Or if we want to improve this even more, maybe at this size, it only has two. So we go from zero or from one column, everything's stacking. Then we get to two columns. And then we can just copy this whole thing here, paste this here, change this over to 60, and change this over to a four. And now we go from everything stacking to two columns to a four column layout. And there's a lot more we could actually do with this. We could make this much fancier. We could come in with an auto fit and a min max and start doing more and not even need media queries here. But that's where things start getting a little bit more complex. It's a little bit harder to be stacking all of these different things and learning everything at once. So if you are just getting started with grid, I'd recommend playing around, practicing with things like this. And then once you're comfortable with the idea of how the columns are working, that's when you start adding things that are a little bit more complex. And the best tool to really understand what's happening with grid is by using that grid inspector that we were quickly looking at. So if you're interested in that, or if you're interested in the sort of the next step I would recommend after being comfortable with this type of thing, I have videos covering both of those topics that are right here. And with that, I'd like to say a very big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Simon, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.